What is crackalacking, everybody? It is GT, the OCG, coming to you from the place to pee. The Presidium Embassy. What, T? Well, it's still PG tips. When you want to kick, go for just the tip. We have Ashley and Caden here. Well, actually, I should say, we have Gunnery Sergeant Williams, and we have Lieutenant Alenko. Should keep my military jargon. And we're going to go around the embassy. We're going to get some lore, hopefully, probably more codexes, and then we're going to go right to the chambers. That's going to be today's episode. Oh, yo, yo. Alliance Patrol Report. Captain Hendrickson reported some unusual energy readings during a patrol of the Argos Rose system. She had particular concerns about the Hydra system, but was recalled before her team could investigate further. No patrols are scheduled for that sector. Do we want to send in a recon team? Okay, so I got a journal update, and this is my first assignment. So I this is an optional, and not a fetch quest, and not a radiant quest. This is actually pertinent to the plot, hopefully. I don't know. But it seems like it would be. It seems like it'll give me something that will be pertinent to the overall plot. Seems to be. Probably a geth issue. So, those kind of things I like. And uh, expose Saren. Expose. Expose him. Pants him. Drop his pants. Okay. So that's all we have here. So we go in here, and again, like I said, I do have a mod. Whoa, no! Don't do that in the embassy. And what do we got here? Okay. Whoa. I understand what you're saying, but these allegations are very serious. I can't just... This is serious. My reputation is at stake. I spoke with the consort in confidence, and her alone, and she betrayed that confidence. All right. I will look into it for you. In the meantime, do not do anything rash. Well, aliens that look like gorillas. And a small little alien that looks like a badger. Cool. Let's talk to this guy. Hello there, human. Sincere apology, but I am here on business and cannot be distracted right now. You seem distressed. Is there something I can do to help? Alarmed response. You overheard that, did you? This is all going so wrong, and it is the Asari Consort's fault. She's the one who started all this. Who's this Asari Consort? Curious. You have not heard. You must be new to the Citadel. Everyone knows Sha'ira, the Consort. I cannot speak more about this problem. It is too sensitive. Suffice it to say, she has compromised my authority as a diplomat. Where can I find this Asari consort? She is across the bridge from here. Her offices are Whoa. easy enough to spot. God, that, that day, guy could probably man. knock me out with one blow. Okay, I won't press any further. All right. Pleased greeting. Human, it is always good to see your kind. How did they I am eat? Ambassador Kalen. Genuine query. Is there something I can do for you this day? Yeah, how do you eat? And second, why are you telling me your tone before you talk to me? Huh. Why do you explain what you're about to say? Our people communicate less through words and more through scent and slight movements. Plainly, 
We discovered our vocal expression was not enough to convey the feelings of our conversations to other species. Why do you bother, Kaelin? These Earth Clan don't really care about our ways. Remorseful response, Din. You don't truly believe that, and if you do, I am very sorry for you. Okay, so this kinda doesn't make sense. Scent and slight movements? You would think they would have, t uh, like, tentacles or maybe uh, hair type things that would move on their head if it was about movement but they're slow and plotting so slight what okay it's not outside the realm of possibility but it is i don't want to say it's it's improbable scent i don't know is that their nose is that a bunch of nostrils or something? Do they have like uh, the olfactory sensors of, uh, of a fox? What does the fox say? Dot, 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 Okay. So let's learn about the Elcor. Tell me more about your species. Genuine enthusiasm. I delight in telling the history of my people. It is agreeable to share our culture with others. All right. So the Elcor, uh, like humans... And right now, you know, Shepard here, he's having a very good conversation with this, uh, well, he's not a diplomat, is he? He's, uh, the diplomat is the other guy. This guy is the ambassador, so he's higher up. He has a team of diplomats, so he's the ambassador. He's number, numero uno. And we're having a great conversation with him. Uh, the other l little badger guy, uh, is a little bit cantankerous, but this guy, boom, it's like Shepard likes him. And I think I think Caden here is probably the only one that has actually seen any alien species. I think uh, John Shepard and Ashley Williams, I think they've all been they've been in the alliance on military excursions on military colonies. So I doubt that they've seen many aliens. And I doubt they have seen any I, I doubt they've seen anything outside the three main. Like the Salarians, uh, the Turians, and the Asari. I think those are the only three that John and Ashley have probably seen. Caden's probably seen more. Tell me about the history and origins of the Elcor. The Elcor were just beginning to explore Council space when the Asari first made contact with us. With their help, we discovered the relay closest to our system, and from there the Citadel. Proudly... Within one lifetime, we established a regular route to the Citadel and quickly became one of the more active species living on this great station. Hmm. Okay, so as much as never judge a book by its cover, they sound plotting. They sound like Eeyore. I lost my tail again. But they seem to be one of the more intelligent species that are in the Citadel. Okay, very nice. What about their culture? I'd like to know more about the culture of the Elcor. Frankly, we Elcor prefer the safety and familiarity of our own colonies to the confines of space travel. Our society is built on small, tight-knit groups. Though we are always welcoming to outsiders, our government tends to be very stable. Our people are not very comfortable with sudden changes. Oh, so you're autistic like me. Um, where, now on top of his head, is that his, his nose? Are those his olf olfactory, uh, sensors? That makes sense. I can see them communicating more by scent than the, that slight movement they said. But I do like, I do like the whole purpose of them actually talking where they, tell you the uh, uh, tonality of what they're going to say before they say it to humans. I, I like that. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Mass Effect did well with this. The writers did very well with this one. Um, an ambassador. You're the ambassador, so what do you do here? What do you do here? Oh. <laughs> Modestly, um. I work to bring the problems and the requests of the Elcor groups to the attention of the council. Huh. 
They only give us these positions to keep us quiet. The council doesn't care about our races. Chastising rebuke. <laughs> your tone is inappropriate, Dan. <laughs> this human is not to blame for your malcontent or your misconceived suspicions. Chastising rebuke. <laughs> I like the Elcor already. I actually like. Uh, I actually like what his name is, Din. I actually like them too, because they're uh, they're reminiscent of uh, the Star Trek, the original series, aliens, uh, the Tellarites. We're all about trade and making a dollar. And something tells me that the Mass Effect writers kind of ripped off the Tellarites for them. So let's see. Can we investigate anything else? No return. Goodbye, Ambassador. I should go. Since oh, at least, hey. Farewell. Good day to you, human. Enjoy your time on the Citadel. Well, yeah, so those two things on the top of his head. Yeah, that makes sense. Those being the olfactory where they get their sense. So I wonder if they actually find human scent repulsive, maybe. But apparently they don't. But let's talk to this guy, Din. Earth Clan, you are in the wrong place, I think. Your ambassador is next door in the large office. Okay. Chastising remark. Don't be so rude, Din. At least introduce yourself. I am Din Korlak, Volus Ambassador. The Volus. Is there something okay. I can do for you, Earth Clan? Okay, so they don't like Earth, Earthlings, uh, humans, probably because we made big strides when it came to getting an embassy here, and of course we have the bigger office, <laughs> which he's already alluded to. And he's probably been around a long time. His race has probably been around a long time here in the Citadel and diplomatic stuff. And he sees the humans overtaking his race. And he's probably he's probably got like a, a small point of why them and not us. What is this place? You are in the embassy for the Volus and the Elcor. Your ambassador is next door. In his own office. In this shared space, I aid my fellow Volus when I'm not being interrupted. <laughs> oh, well, so even the Elcor kind of said is kind of like, yeah, he's got his own office, which I can see both of them probably having a uh, feeling slighted about that. Yeah, I would. I would if I were either one of these ambassadors. I'd like to know more about the Volus. I'm sure our history and culture would bore you, Earth Clan. I'll give it a shot. Actually, I would like to know more about your history. My people came to the Citadel shortly after the Asari and Salarians had discovered it. We were instrumental in establishing a standardized galactic economy. However, despite our long association with the Citadel and our many contributions to galactic society, we still do not hold a seat on the council. Okay, so I got it. I got it. Well, he wasn't being subtle, so I'm not going to say I'm Sherlock Holmes here. But I also call that he's one of the older races that have been around. So, but I don't think I don't, I'm not sure if he's got hatred with the humans. I think it's just basically he wants more say for uh, with regards to his people, and I don't blame him. I don't blame the Volish if they were around this long. And and again, like I said, they did rip off the Tellarites. Basically, uh, the Tellarites were the uh, big traders and money movers, and uh, in the old uh, Star Trek series, the original series, and um, the beginning of that timeline, you know, with the Andorians, Vulcans, and Tellarites being, and, and humans being the four main, the four founding members of the United uh, Federation of Planets. And they also give... Uh, 
the, the volus their temperament because they are very I mean it was it's it was <clears throat> kind of lazy writing on old Star Trek part but they made the Tellarites pig they give them pig noses uh, give them hooves and dew claws and so they were very much uh, pig like in appearance so uh, stubborn as a pig and so they they were stubborn and it seems like the volus are also in that stubborn cantankerous uh personality type so let's what about their culture tell me about volus culture we are tribal by nature but our ways are not violent we barter and trade our lands and tribe members in order to increase status larger tribes often engulf smaller ones and eventually split again our society is very malleable, and our government is always shifting and changing. Since we're not physically adept, we trade our services for protection. And it, so it's... It also seems like a slight that they would put you with the Elcor. Elcor doesn't like change, and you guys are all about change. That's not cool. That's not cool about the council get, making you two share. I can see where you're kind of peeved. Um, what is it you do here? I look out for the best interests of the Volus people. No easy task considering how often we are overlooked by the council. Chastising rebuke, Din. The council favors your species greatly. Oh, do they? You are naive. The Earth Clan will be invited to the council long before our species will. Yeah, I called that too. That's where his main beef comes from. He's seeing that Earth was Earth was uh, humans were discovered, and then all of a sudden humans are now got an embassy. They got their own room, and well, they're, they're humans are just more assertive. That's that's what we are. We're more assertive. We're more exploratory. We're more pushing the bounds of our humanity and our. And our talents. It's just what we are. And it le seems the Volus are more go with the flow kind of thing. Um, council minutes. Why aren't the Volus or Elcor part of the council? All species must prove themselves before they join the council. All but the Earth clans, it would seem. Dismissive. Ignore the Volus Ambassador, human. He is incorrect in his assessment. Really? How long have we been waiting? How long do you think we'll continue to wait? Bah! This talk is wasted on the humans. Oh. Uh, I, 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 dude, I, want, I do want to get you on my side. I do. But now I'm going to call you out. You seem to have a bit of a chip on your shoulder, Din. You humans are new to the Citadel, and yet the Council has granted you great favor. <sighs> Chastising rebuke, Din. Your species has always been granted many concessions. Volus territory has expanded tenfold since coming to the Citadel. Ah, okay. <clears throat> Details. Uh -huh. We still have no real say in the decisions that affect Citadel space. Okay. <clears throat> so that's what they want. They want power, not expansion. Okay. Goodbye, Ambassador. Yes, yes. Good day, Earth Clan. Uh, it seemed he lightened up a little bit with that with that uh, bond voyage. What the hell? Oh, this must be one of those keepers. Okay. Then why am I not seeing them on my map? Do I have to... Tr I probably have to trigger it somehow. Uh, I probably do have to trigger it, right? Avena. Avena. Oh, Avena is that um, VI. Okay. And then over here, wards access... Rapid Transit, Citadel Tower. 
So that's where we got to go, is the Citadel Tower. We've got the Emporium over here. Whatever. Oh, there's the Consort. Rapid Transit and Avena. CSEC HQ and Embassy Lounge. So that's we're going to go there next. We're going to go around here, up here, all the way here. Then we're going to talk to Avena. And then we're going to go... Actually, we should talk to Avena first. Go around here and... Can we spit out here and then go right to the Citadel Tower? Codex! The Elk... Oh, the Elcor are a citadel species native to the high gravity world Dakuna. They are massive creatures, standing on four muscular legs for increased stability. Elcor move slowly, an evolved response to an environment where a fall can be lethal. This has colored their psychology, making them deliberate and conservative. Elcor's speech is ponderous and monotone. Among themselves, scent, slight movements, and subvocalized infrasound convey shades of meaning that make a human smile seem as subtle as a fireworks display. Since their subtlety can lead to misunderstandings with other species, the Elcor often go out of their way to clarify when they are being sarcastic, amused, or angry. Dakuna's high gravity impedes mountain formation. Most of the world consists of flat, open plains, which prehistoric Elcor wandered across in small family bands. Modern Elcor still prefer open sky and can become restless and uncomfortable on long starship journeys. Oh, so this must be torture for them. So being an ambassador of the Elcor species is kind of like... Ugh. It's sort of like torture. I like it. I get, I get it. Okay, so the Elcors, yeah. And uh, that sub-vocalized infrasound, that makes a lot more sense than slight movements, to tell you the truth. I, I get that. That's good. Okay. The Volus are a member species of the Citadel with their own embassy, but they are also a client race of the Turians. Centuries ago, they were voluntarily absorbed into the hierarchy, effectively trading their mercantile prowess for Turian military protection. Erun, their homeworld, lies far beyond the normal life zone of its star. However, the world has a high-pressure greenhouse atmosphere that traps enough heat to support an ammonia-based biochemistry. As a result, the Volus must wear pressure suits and breathers when dealing with other species as conventional nitrogen-oxygen air mixtures are poisonous to them, and in the low-pressure atmospheres tolerable to most species, their flesh will actually split open. Oh, no. Volus culture is tribal, bartering lands and even people to gain status. This culture of exchange inclines them to economic pursuits. It was the Volus who authored the Uniform <coughs> Banking Act, and they continue to monitor and balance the Citadel economy. Well, now we know why they're cranky. <laughs> they have to wear horrible suits in order not to freaking split open. Wow. And if they get punctured in any way, they dead. That's a horrible existence. So yeah, I know I'm I'm going to assume that any any Volus we meet is going to be slightly cranky because they have to wear these damn suits. If we find any um, happy ones, it would be something else. Ooh. But they were found by the Asari. So they were found by the Asari, but... They... They basically... Be, became annexed by the Turians. So that's why you don't have a space in the council. You're already under the thumb of the Turians. So why should they give you any concessions? They already got you. That's why. That's You should be complaining about Turians, not humans or Earth clans. So yeah, you're, you're, you're barking up the wrong tree, badger boy. All right. We got this. Go to the right here. Hold on.
Oh, okay, so there's nothing there. That's just a, a dead door. Okay. So Welcome we got... to the Presidium. Allow me to be your guide. Okay, so there's a Vina, but we do have the Embassy receptionist, and this is the first time we're meeting in Asari. Good day, Commander. The human ambassador is up the stairs, first room on the right. Uh, again, these are two stupid things. Of course she knows about me. She's the Embassy receptionist. She's going to know anybody that comes in or out. All right. So let's just talk about the location. What is this place? Uh, this is the Presidium. More specifically, you are at the Citadel Embassies. If you have more questions, please access Avina. What's that? Oh, Avina is the virtual guide for the Citadel. Feel free to access the terminal yourself. All right, and then we'll just ask about her. What's your name? What do you do here? My name is Sephiria. I'm the administrative assistant for the Embassies. You seem to be distracted. The embassies are the hub of all Citadel politics. <laughs> when you represent trillions of citizens, it tends to get a little busy. Okay. Well, then I'll leave you then. But nice to meet you, Safiri. Safi. Nice to meet you, Safi. I should be going now. Have a pleasant day. And we leveled up with that. Okay. Um. Charm. Pistols. Marksman. Unlock shotguns. And now we got shotguns. But we're not going to use them right. We're still going to have the pistol. We got one more. There we go. Uh, four, four, Caden. Throw, massive field, hurl objects. Barrier. Give him first aid. Still damaged by four. Hmm. Don't know. Well, let's just give him a more like the barrier kind of thing because he drops way too much. He not very good. <gasps> Vehicle repair. Good lord, darn it! All right, and now we got Ashley, and Ashley's going. Right there. Now she's got first aid. There. And give her assault rifle. She's got the same amount of health I do. Do we have any equipment? No. Codex, uh, Presidium Ring. Ring is a closed loop of park-like spaces serving as the connection point for the wards. Interior walls are lined with the embassies of influential species, private residents for the galaxy's elite. Oh, wow. As much as things change, they remain the same, don't they? Presidium is full of open-air restaurants, bars, and luxurious, luxurious meeting areas. Gravity is about one-third Earth normal. Yeah, we already read that from the statistics. Holographic sky is projected over the ceiling of the ring. Unlike the 24-7 bustle of the wards, the Presidium maintains a 20-hour day schedule with a 6-hour night where lights are dimmed and the sky goes through a night cycle. Offices and residences are often open to the interior. It is not unusual for embassies to have no exterior wall at all. This does not cause a crime problem due to the heavy C-Sec presence and ubiquitous monitoring devices on the Presidium. Thieves are quickly identified and apprehended. The ring is the location of the Citadel spaceports being closer to the center of spin. There's less motion for a ship to match, and the reduced spin gravity makes handling cargo easier. 
I really like how they give thought to all this. This is really cool. Hundreds of ships space through the Citadel every day. Every species with an embassy is granted a private dock. That's good as well. The tower at the center of the ring holds the administration of the Citadel Council. Tower rises over a kilometer from the ring, appearing to thrust towards thrust forward parallel to the ward arms as the towers at the center of the spin axis experience little centrifugal force. Gravity is maintained using mass effect fields at a 90 degree angle to the ring and wards. A consular dock can be found at the base of the tower. While normally used for diplomatic couriers and spectra business, the shuttle's docked here can evacuate the council government in an emergency. Okay. So again, if I'm about one third earth normal here, why the hell am I not like bouncing off the walls? That's what I got to say. All right, so let's talk to Avina. Greetings and welcome to the Presidium. My name is Avina, and I am pleased to be your virtual guide throughout this level of the Citadel Space Station. Really? Really? Am I going to ask that? Jesus. What does that mean? Oh, I am a Lord. fully interactive I'm an idiot. virtual intelligence. That's what it means. Program to provide spontaneous guidance at predetermined locations of interest throughout this level of the Citadel. I may also be contacted through any of the Presidium VI terminals, should you require assistance. Okay. Give me the tour. You are standing at Presidium Tourism Terminal 1. On either side of this lobby are the embassies of the various Citadel races, along with CSEC headquarters. On the far end of this level, you can see the Citadel Tower, where the Council meets regularly to discuss matters of interstellar importance. I do. I like how he does kind of look to the left and then looks off where it is. I want to know more about Citadel Security. Citadel Security serves as law enforcement for all regions of the Citadel, though the majority of officers serve in the wards. Executor Palin, a Turian, is the current head of CSEC, but individuals from virtually every species across Citadel space serve as officers beneath him. If you wish to learn more, Executor Palin's office is located in the CSEC headquarters just across the lobby. Tell me about the embassies. Each species in Citadel space important enough to be consulted on matters of galactic politics maintains an embassy on the Presidium. The Volus were the first non-council species to be granted an embassy, roughly 2,384 galactic standard years ago. As Citadel space has expanded, more embassies have been added. The most recently added embassy belongs to your own species, humanity. It was added 19 galactic standard years ago, despite some rather vocal opposition. Well, now you know why Din is ticked off at this kind of crap. <laughs> the Volus were here 2,000 years ago, and they were the fourth species to be here at the Citadel. And they're not on the council, although that would also that would also make it four people on the council. You can't you can't really have that. You got to have a tiebreaker, right? So, and let's ask why the Volus were first. How come the Volus were the first species given an embassy? In the early years following the formation of the council, the Volus were, apart from the Asari and Salarians, the most populous and widespread species in Citadel space. They established many new colonies and trading outposts, and they petitioned the Council for a greater role in determining interstellar policy. In recognition of their work to expand interstellar trade and establish a standardized galactic economy, the Volus were granted an embassy here on the Citadel. Well, that seems prudent. Why weren't they made a Council race? The Council races have extensive responsibilities. They must provide personnel and ships for the Citadel fleets. They often provide economic aid in times of disaster. It would be unfair to demand such an enormous burden of a species unable to meet these obligations. The embassies allow lesser species to have a voice on the Citadel. Wow. Lesser species. That's pretty damn arrogant. Oh, I apologize if That's my personality has offended you. Please submit all formal complaints <laughs> in writing to the Citadel Tourist and Visitor Board. That is not... That is, see, that's the problem. It's like, I didn't want to... I wanted to ask what what the... And I yell at a VI for being arrogant. Oh my god, I just... I seem like a moron here. <laughs> 